there's no real way to eliminate that variable or that uh, contributing factor to your uh, uh, inconsistent response time. But um, in production, they are also the same. So we just assume that um, our response time capture from such infrastructure, such a ground, also replicate in production. So this exactly what we mentioned before. We will do certain projections and that will be included in of course uh, your final test report. Um, it, that will be our job to analyze all the data, all the observations, all the findings during our test execution or even planning and to come up with Conclusion, because sometimes even uh, your own team member, your performance testing team member, they even developers, they even SQL developers, uh, server management, project managers, they really don't know how to uh, analyze the data that you get or understand the graph. So presenting a graph may not be the most helpful option. So we have to analyze them and come up with uh, some statements for conclusion. This project, we have 10 test scenarios, although we have 13 scripts because we split one scenario into um, three different ones. Um, from identifying, we'll spend approximately one week to identify the scenarios. Um, approximately three weeks to do the scripting and then another week or so to prepare the test data and then one week to um, create the load profiles or forget at the beginning should after identifying the scenarios we, we have to spend about really two weeks to design the whole thing like um, um, how much load we should be up to um, what the increments to be different details in the testing cycle. So, uh, and then test execution is the big part because um, we are not just running the test and get the results. We are, uh, during the course of executing the test, we find issues. And when we find issues, then developers or server management will change some settings. We will run the test. So there are multiple site test cycles uh, for test execution. So it, um, for that project, just test execution for the first phase lasted three, three weeks. You're then, talking duration, not effort, like on your part. The, the <coughs> one week and then the two weeks and then the three weeks, that was duration? Duration. You're, you're duration. waiting for information and so forth? Talk, uh, coordination. Yeah. And Waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so, like three months, one person? For that project. Or more person, yeah. um, Because it's a collaborated effort, um, like I said, I only did the um, like planning, design, scripting, execution, report analysis. analysis. Um, for that, the, that project that you looked at, Almost three months. One person, yeah. You, you, you were, you were for me, yeah. yeah. Um, I, um, I will. S I can say that for a typical performance testing project with around eight to ten test scenarios, and each of them are not too complex because you don't want you. Again, we are not doing functional functional testing, and we should have some really 
frequently used scenarios which is not too complex. So um, 10, 8 to 10 test scenarios to scrape, design, plan, execute, everything should be around two months. And assuming that we don't need to run too many different cycles to uh, identify performance issues. Are you going to show us a demo on how to to run the Adobe Runner? Not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, quick question. Uh, so you said, uh, based on you, uh, how much you paid the HP, they will give you some license, uh, how many uh, what you, uh, users you can, you can use, right? But you also mentioned that there have a tool called load generator agents. Normally, this is useless, right? This can help you to generate huge amount of users there. Right? So normally, you have some limitation, right? maybe 100 or 200. Oh, OK. So you're talking about the limit on the load generators? Yeah, you said that load, uh, load generator agents can help you create maybe 1,000 uh, watch users right, there. Right. So normally, no use for for companies to test it. No, the load generators are part of the HP tool. Okay. Yeah, because the HP controller will send the scripts to the load generators. Okay. The load generators will use the scripts and generate the load. So the load generator agents are part of the HP load runner tool. So load runner itself comes with the load generators, the, the scripting environment, we call it the um, EU gen generator scripting, and the, um, the controller to actually design the load and import all the script to run the test, and the analysis tool to run the reports. Oh, so my understanding is uh, uh, load generator agent have that, that ability, but normally you only can use uh, your limitation, uh, maybe one hand, you, you purchase maybe one, you can generate 100 what you use. That's uh, based on oh, your how much the, you pay. The right? number, number of use, virtual users you can generate from load runner depends on the license you got from HP. Okay, okay. So it's not like a hardware limit or a number of different um, load generators you have. When you launch load runner, um, it it will show you how many virtual users for different uh, technologies um, based on your license. Okay. For example, because each uh, load runner can do web load testing, can do SAP load testing, can do Citrix, can do PeopleSoft, can do Java, a whole bunch of different, uh, different things. Each of them will have their own license. <laughs> Normally, wow. they come with web. Okay. And when you buy load runner, I think, comes with a hundred virtual users for free, <laughs> but you pay for it anyway. And if you want to run a thousand user test, you have to contact HP, tell them that you plan to run a um, thousand user test, I need a thousand virtual users license. And then they will ask you, so when do you plan to run it? Because you, don't, you, don't, you are not paying to get that for life. So you plan for two months, okay, I give you a, a thousand users for two months. So uh, when you start using it, then it will keep counting down. So you have two months. But if you can do it in two weeks, uh, it will be cheaper. So if you can do it in two weeks, then okay, I will give you a discount for two weeks. Or something like that. So that would be another reason to sort of do your early testing with that hundred free license. <laughs> and then at the end, just slam it with the dollar. Because the, the scripting environment you can use, you don't, you don't need all these uh, licenses to do scripting. And the dry runs, you may only need maybe a hundred users to do all dry runs. Making sure if everything works, then you can kick off your license and do your own testing. Uh, but like I, we always said, we are not selling for HP, but I know that <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> um, um, they have, I, I know out there are services, hosted services out there to kind of lease uh, HP for you to use on, on the cloud infrastructure. So uh, it's, I think I would say that it's a um, better model than just buying all the licenses for, for testing because most organizations they don't run load testing all year round.